The 1960 Stanley Cup final marked the pinnacle of a glorious era on many levels for the Canadians. The victory on April 14th clinched the fifth Stanley Cup of an unforgettable and unmatched dynasty. The powerful Montreal machine didn't lose a single game that postseason, but there was still a monumental loss in the fall of 1960 as the franchise bid adieu to the Rocket Maurice Richard. This was the 10th consecutive final appearance by the Canadians, the last installment of an awesome reign. But it was also the grand conclusion to a hockey icon's magnificent career. Please welcome a member of that historic team, Hall of Famer and Montreal's all-time playoff scoring king, Jean Beliveau, who scored the first goal in the final game, Jean, that night, 4 nothing final score at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. You had won four in a row. Did five mean that much to you at that point? Well, there's no doubt in the uh, back of our mind that we knew in uh, 1960 if we win the Stanley Cup, there would be five in a row. Uh, as you know, this uh, rivalry that exists still today, uh, you can imagine how it was in uh, 1960. Uh, but it was certainly, uh, uh, we were so happy uh, as a team. And that's what made the Canadian of all those years uh, a great family atmosphere we had on the road and on the train, as you know. And uh, those uh, five standing up in a row, uh, they cannot take that away uh, from us. And uh, we were certainly very happy about it. The final score, 4 nothing, almost fitting because they often say everything starts in the nets. And in Jacques Plante, right. you had one of the greatest. You had a lot of superstars in that team, but you have to look at him certainly for what he did for all five. Well... Uh, Still today, we say uh, if you don't have a good goalie, you're going to have a hard time uh, during the playoff. Uh, there's no doubt uh, Jacques, uh, Jacques uh, we used to talk on the train. I don't know how many hours Jacques and I, we, uh, we talk. Uh, Jacques was like me. We didn't play card much. And, uh, and uh, uh, as you know, uh, Jacques was a great innovator. Right. Uh, I always remember in, uh, in uh, Chicago one time he said the, uh, the crossbar is uh, maybe a quarter of an inch or one inch, uh, one eighth of an inch, and he was right. Yeah, that's true. And uh, now we had a lot of respect uh, for Jacques. Uh, Jacques, uh, like uh, many goalies, uh, they, are, they, have the, they are their own man. And, uh, but uh, I remember telling uh, my teammates, I said, let him live the life that he enjoyed, but as long as he's doing the job during the game. So we had, uh, we had a, great, a great group of guys. I know that Toble didn't always get along with Jacques, but he yeah. said in later years he was the best goaltender that he ever saw. Toblake was known, Jean, as a tremendous competitor as a player. He's in the Hall of Fame as a player, not as a coach. He must have taken that competitive edge of his into coaching because one of the hardest things for any coach to do is to keep a good team good, Harder to keep a great team great, and that's what he did with you fellas. Especially when you have great hockey players. When, uh, when you have great hockey players, you want to be on the ice all the time. But to manage all of us, you know, to keep us happy. Uh, you're right. I, I remember listening to Hockey Night in Canada on the radio in the 40s, and uh, I, I'm sure that uh, Tu was a hard worker on that line. Elmer was the playmaker. Maurice uh, en enjoyed so much uh, scoring goals. And I've seen uh, Tobley cry after a Stanley Cup, and I've seen him cry uh, after we lost. Now, we had as a team, and I think everybody, everybody on the team, and I can talk uh, uh, on behalf of my teammates when I became captain, uh, you get a little closer to the coach. and. Uh, we had a lot of respect for him uh, to prove as a player, and like you said, he proved as a coach uh, the same determination. How he loved that game of hockey. Yeah. I used to sit with him on the catwalk with, uh, with you guys at the forum, and I, I used to sit with him, and uh, he will never miss a game. He'll see everything, the good thing and the bad thing. Uh, so. Uh, me and all my teammates, we had a lot of respect for him. You mentioned Maurice. Did you have an idea, say in 1960, that this was going to be his last year? For sure. Since he reported to training camp in the fall of 1960, 
maybe we, uh, we, we had an idea that he might, and I always going to remember his last practice, he, we had a scrimmage, the red against the white, and he scored four goals. <laughs> and in the afternoon, he announced that uh, he's uh, making an end, he's closing his career. That was the end. Uh, there's no doubt, uh, you know, since listening to Hockey Night in Canada in 1945 when he scored four goals, I've been teammate with him for seven years. As a matter of fact, I sat beside him for seven years. So it was, a, it was quite a shock for all the fans. But uh, on a personal basis, I said I've been listening to this guy since uh, 1945. So it was a shock when he decided. Finally, Jean, you had so many superstars on that team. Plant, Harvey, Moore, Bellavoe, the Richards, uh, Hall of Famers. But you told me one time that the key you felt to that entire run of five Stanley Cups were the secondary players, the mm, guys okay. in the trenches, if you want. You said you had the best players of that level of any team in the league. You know, Bob Turner, uh, Donnie Marshall, uh, Phil Goyette. And uh, uh, like there's that. no doubt. Claude Provo yeah. and uh, uh, Talbot and all those guys. Uh, there's no doubt. No way you're going to win. Uh, the uh, Stanley Cup only relying on a, on a couple of guys. It's a team effort, and it, today uh, it may be a little, a little worse with four rounds. So, but you need uh, the uh, tremendous support that uh, those guys have to face most of the time, the best opponent yeah, lines. Uh, they have to kill penalties. Uh, so, uh, no, I've always had a lot of respect for those guys. No doubt, they were responsible for some of the cup. Five in a row was never done before. It hasn't been done since, and I think I'm safe in saying it won't happen again. John, thank you. Thank you very much, Dick.